Hi, I'm Loz and I'm on location at Monterey Bay Aquarium in California for Earth Unplugged to bring you a special collaboration. This is Patrick. Hey everyone. And between us, we're going to look at the incredible ways that animals have adapted to life in and out of the water in two videos at the same time. To work, this video needs to be synchronised with the aquariums. It's really easy to do, just open the link below in another browser window and get ready to hit play in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Did you know that every breath that you take is connected to the ocean? Around 50% of the world's oxygen is generated by marine plants, including photosynthesizing phytoplankton. These are microscopic organisms that can be found in oceans all around the world. Our blue planet is filled with amazing life like this, and our understanding of it has progressed alongside our ability to go and find it. And to be able to do that, we've got to breathe underwater. It's taken hundreds of years to develop breathing apparatus like Patrick's about to put on. And living in a liquid world is much different to being just a visitor. And so ocean animals with lungs have had to evolve to surviving on just their breath. For example, the muscles of a sperm whale are filled with an oxygen binding protein called myoglobin, and this powers their long dives. And their thick, syrup-like blood carries red blood cells all around their bodies, and their massive organs are programmed to slow down or shut down. And that happens in order of importance as they descend into the abyss. <gasps> <sighs> On land, it's much easier to conserve body heat. At just 12 degrees Celsius, this jacket will keep me nice and warm. But in the ocean, animals have evolved some incredible adaptations to a life aquatic. Temperature determines the rate of chemical reactions, so in cold water, life moves at a much slower pace. While the Greenland shark uses temperatures of around 4 degrees Celsius, can live for over 400 years. On land, our eyes are treated to the full colours of the rainbow and everything in between. If you're unfamiliar, the Ishihara test is user check for colour blindness. We're both going to read out the numbers on the cards at the same time, and we should find that for Patrick in the water it's a bit more tricky, as the deeper you go, the more colours are lost until all that's left is blue. Seven. Sixteen. And eighty-nine. And even on land, animals have evolved to utilise different parts of the spectrum to us. We only use a small amount of available light, but birds and insects can see ultraviolet or UV light. And some birds, like golden eagles, even have built-in zoom lenses to help them spot prey from kilometres away.
Just as light transforms under the water, so does sound. In the air, sound travels at 343 metres per second. Lost to surface, can we get the bell rang please? Copy that, lads. We can hear a lot more, a lot louder, but it's almost impossible to tell where the sound's coming from. Now land animals go way above us in the hearing states. As Patrick mentioned, bats use echolocation to find their way in the dark, and orcas also echolocate using high frequency noises to find their food. And low frequency noises are also great for animals. Did you know that elephants can hear through the ground using low frequency noises over large distances? And blue whales can communicate across entire ocean basins with their low frequency singing. And land animals have evolved lots of different things like exoskeletons and fluid-filled guts and bones to help them stay rigid in a gravity-filled world. Blue whales are the heaviest creatures to ever live on the planet, weighing a massive 330,000 pounds. That's 150,000 kilograms. And growing up to a mighty 30 metres in length, and that's all thanks to support from their big blue world. And the lion's mane jellyfish can also reach 30 metres. If you found it on the beach, it'd be a big blob. But in there, they become big, beautiful and billowing as they're buoyed up by the ocean. On land, life disappears above a certain altitude, and if it does end up there, it's only in passing, not so in the ocean. So there you have it, two incredible worlds and each home to some amazing species. And it's one that we're still exploring, still discovering and still learning about.
And Earth subscribers, if you enjoyed this video, then do check out more of Monterey's stuff because you get more of, I mean, this. I mean, look at it, it's amazing. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you guys.